morning. Good morning, Chappelle. we just like to welcome you to a great Sunday morning here at Chappelle Memorial. Well, you all are rising and feet. I hope you have a smile on your face this morning. Even if the, the bacon was burnt, even though the coffee wasn't good, but you're here this morning. We just want to say welcome. Father, on this morning, God, we say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for already being in the midst of the service. Lord, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for what we're going to hear. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for even after the service is over, how you're going to make a way in our lives. Lord, we excited for what you're doing, for what you've already done, and we thank you for what you're doing right now. Let us all say amen and amen and amen. Come on, let's get God some praise.
They all belong to you, God, Lord. We thank you. We praise you on this morning, Father. They all belong to you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, praise team. Give it to him. Give it to him. He deserves it all. Amen. Yes, yes. about that letter that's in your mailbox it all belongs to him you worried about that bill but it all belongs to him you might be worried about your relationship you might be worried about your children you might be worried about your money you might be worried about your job you might even just be worried about yourself but it still all belongs to him Give it to him on this morning. Uh, just a couple of announcements. Please continue your prayers for Ms. Sharon uh, McNeil in the loss of her mother. Uh, continue to lift her, um, her up and the family. Um, please continue to pray for Sister uh, Barbara Roberts. She uh, continues to heal from surgery. She's out. So let's continue to lift her up and pray for a speedy recovery. Uh, and she will be healed even better than she was before the surgery. Uh, don't forget our graduation Sunday. It's coming. We are excited for our graduates. High school and college graduates, we have a, quite a few numbers this year. So we're excited, and we want you to be excited. Uh, come on out with us. Celebrate with us on, Janu I mean, on June the 13th. Uh, leaders, parents, uh, church family, uh, no matter who you are, bring your cousin. If they just came from the club the other night, bring them to to come celebrate graduation because they was at the graduation party at the house. So you can bring them to church to let them celebrate here with us also as we celebrate in our parade. Uh, please continue to look uh, at the uh, Communique Facebook, uh, uh, the emails to uh, find out more about graduation. If your child did graduate uh, uh, college or um, high school, and they are active members at Chappelle, please, if you haven't already, please reach out uh, to either the church or my wife or, uh, or I or Sister Carrie so we can get your information in. And please, if you're getting this, we need it now as you're watching this or listening to this. So please send that in. Take a break. YouTube little stays up and on the phone so you can still watch it and you can still send an email and a picture. Thank you so much. Uh, also, continue to stay plugged in, like I said, through our virtual platforms and things like that. Uh, any birthdays, if we celebrate any birthdays uh, on this past week, uh, we want to say happy birthday to you uh, and wish you many more. Uh, any anniversaries, if you had a celebrated anniversary, uh, happy anniversary to you. Uh, and if you ha haven't, I pray that we are all still together. God's in the midst of it. Amen. All right. Now it's a part of the service that we all can celebrate together as we stand and say, uh, well, we don't have to stand, but our tithing confession. And it says, I am what God says I am. I live a life of uh, purpose and fulfillment. Uh, 
Every need in my life is met because I have purpose in my heart to trust God in all things. I, to, I desire to tie consistently my faith. By faith, I bring my tithes and offerings in obedience with thanksgiving. By faith, I plant them in good soil at Chappelle Memorial. By faith, we offer these gifts to you, God, to further your ministry. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, now as we prepare to get ready for a, a word of the Lord, our scripture will be coming from the book of Jonah, verses 1 through 10, NIV. But to Jonah, this seemed very wrong, and he became angry. He prayed to the Lord, isn't this what I said, Lord, when I was still at home? That is what I tried to forestall by fleeing to Tarshish, Tarshish, I knew that you are a gracious and a compassionate God, slow to anger and abounding, abounding in love, a God who relents from sending uh, calamity. Now, Lord, take away my life, for if it's better for me to die than to live. But the Lord replied, is it right for you to be angry? Jonah have gone out and sat down at a place east of the city there he made himself a shelter, sat in, an, uh, sat in its shade, and waited to see what would happen to the city. When the Lord God provided a leafy plant and made it grow up over Jonah to give him a shade for his head to ease his discomfort, and Jonah was very, unha was very happy about the plant. But at dawn the next day, God provided a worm, which chewed the plant so that it withered. When the sun rose, God provided a scorching east wind, and the sun blazed on Jonah's head so that he grew faint. He wanted to die and said, it will be better for me to die than to live. But God said to Jonah, is it right for you to be angry about the plant? It is, he said, and I am so angry, I wish I were dead. But God said, but the Lord said, you have been concerned about this plant, though you do not tend or tend it or make it grow. It sprang up overnight and died overnight. For I have just read the book of Jonah, verses 1, to 10, verses 1 through 10. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearing and the reading of his word. If we can, by the extension of our right hand, play, say, Minister Marcy, preach the word. Minister Marcy, preach the word. Minister Marcy, preach the word. Right after the angelic voices of our praise team. So you cleaned me up inside, you thought I was to die for. So you sacrificed your life so I could be free, so I could be whole, so I could take.
you came and changed my life. You thought I was worth keeping. So you cleaned me up inside. You thought I was to die for. You thought I was to die for. Hallelujah. If you stand in the need of help on this morning, I want you to go ahead and give that thing over to God on this morning. For his word says that all we have to do is cast our cares on him. Why? Because the Lord, our God, he cares for you. So whatever that situation is, as Minister Gerard mentioned, whatever it is, go ahead and take it to your altar there in your homes, on your job, or your car, wherever you are, and give that thing over to God. Stop focusing on that situation. Stop focusing on that outcome. But look to the hills from which come of your help, knowing that all of your help, all of your help only comes from the Lord above. Come on, Chappelle. If you're excited on this morning, if you're ready to receive a word from the Lord, go ahead and put your hands together right there in your homes, in your car, wherever you are. Go ahead and give the Lord some praise on this morning for the Lord. He is big. He has been good. He has kept us all on another week. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Well, good morning, Chappelle, and happy Sunday to all of you. I want to say first, giving honor to God and to my pastor, Reverend Norman E. Carey, in his absence on this morning. I want to say, Pastor Carey, I am praying for you. I pray that God will continue to keep you, restore you as only as he can continue to trust God. Continue to trust God. Cast your cares upon him for the Lord God. He cares for you. I thank you for an opportunity to stand here at your mantle and declare the word of the Lord on this morning. Chappelle members and friends, the scripture has already been read and you're hearing by Minister Gerard. I'll be coming from Jonah chapter 4 on this morning, and I want to reference verses 10 and 11. And the word of the Lord says, Then, the, then said the Lord, Thou hast pity on the gourd, for the which thou hast not labored, neither made it grow, which came up in a night and perished in a night. And should I not spare Nineveh, that great city, wherein are more than six score thousand persons, that's 120,000 persons, that cannot discern between their right hand nor their left hand, and also much cattle. By way of subject on this morning, Chappelle, I want to lift up by, by the subject, by any means necessary, by any means necessary, let us go to God in prayer. Father God, we thank you for this day. Father God, we thank you for waking us up this morning, Lord. We thank you for starting us on our way. Now, Father God, I ask that you move Marcy out the way. Father God, let your glory, Lord God, be revealed through the word on today. Father God, may something that you say on this morning, Lord God, through me, maybe prick somebody's heart, change somebody's mind, Lord God, so they may want to know a little bit more about you, Father God, and what it means Lord God, to serve you, what it means to honor you, Father God, and what it means to be in your presence. Lord, we love you, we thank you, and we honor you, and it's in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. On this morning, Chappelle, the phrase, by any means necessary, initially became significant when it was used by Franz Fanon in his 1960 address to the Accra Positive Action Conference titled, Why We Use Violence. Reverend Ashford, Malcolm X also quoted this expression in public speeches to challenge his listeners to take action to gain their rights, respect, and their freedom. The term Chappelle simply means to be willing to do whatever is needed to achieve or accomplish something. 
Maybe my college graduates and my high school graduates can attribute to this. You know, as when you're finishing up, when you wrapped up this final semester, I'm quite sure some of you all were ready to secure your diplomas and your degrees, and you did whatever needed to be done by any means necessary to get the job done. Maybe that required you having to stay up some late nights and attend some late study sessions. Maybe that required you to repeat several trips back to Starbucks for some late night drinks just to stay awoke. Maybe that mean, meant less time hanging out with your girlfriends. Maybe that meant less time hanging out with the guys. Maybe that meant less time, guys, hanging out on Instagram and spending time on Facebook keeping up with everybody. Maybe that meant less time having your heads down in your phones. Maybe that meant less time for some of you all for spending time with your loved ones, for our parents and adults. When we think about that very dollar that we have to stretch day to day, week to week, and month to month, just to put a meal on the table, you know what it means and you know what it takes by any means necessary to be able to provide for your family. Maybe you struggled in making that card note. Maybe you did what was necessary and, and getting the job done and staying at the office late hours. Maybe you spent more overtime on the job. Maybe you were counting the pennies, nickels, and dimes in that glass jar of yours just to make, make it happen for your family. Maybe you called on Big Mama. Maybe you called on Granddaddy. Maybe you robbed Peter just to pay Paul just to get the job done. You did whatever it took by any means necessary to take care and provide for your family. My fellow musicians, maybe you after working your nine to five, maybe you stayed up late there in your rooms. Maybe you stayed up late coming out to the church, practicing those chords, playing those keys just to get the songs and the notes right, just so when we prepared to tape the live stream, service wouldn't be a flop. Maybe you understood what it took to do what it is for the Lord by any means necessary to receive that blessing from God. Chappelle. We all know what it means to do whatever it is possible, whatever is necessary to fulfill and accomplish whatever mission is we're trying to complete at hand. Whatever it, is, whatever it took to make it happen. Why? Because you had and I had an expected end that you wanted to play out right before your very eyes. Chappelle, there's nothing like giving it all you got to see the reward at hand, to re reap the blessings of the Lord at hand. Let's go back to the word. Here in the book of Jonah, which is one of the shortest books of the Bible, which only consists of four short chapters, that was somebody else who was willing to do whatever they had to do by any means necessary to see their plan come to fruition. That's right, I'm talking about the Lord God Almighty. Right in the beginning of the book, when the drama began to unfold, Jonah was asked by the Lord, don't Jonah received a word from the Lord to go down to Nineveh. The Lord asked him to do, to do three things. He said to go, he asked him to preach, and he asked him to prophesy a word to the children of Nineveh. Why? Because of their wickedness that had come up before the Lord's very eyes. Chappelle, in other words, Nineveh had gotten out of hand. They had gotten out of hand so much so that they had started to show their literal behinds. Chappelle, I want to mention this. In the midst of God sending the request to Jonah, guess what Jonah did? Jonah did everything but what God asked him to do. Jonah took his little old self and ran down to Tarshish and got on the boat down at Joppa and made his way down to Tarshish. In other words, he got out of Dodge. He actually traveled in the opposite direction of Nineveh. And no sooner than he got there, guess what happened? The Lord went straight to work. He sent a great wind, and it was so great that they thought the ship was going to break. You see, the people on the boat got scared. They were fearful while Jonah got on the boat, found him a little corner, and went off to sleep. Well, the shipmaster 
had to have known who Jonah was because he went directly to Jonah and he spoke him up and told him, I need you to call on your God. You know, we can run, Chappelle, but guess what? We can't hide. Just when we think it's okay to do the very things that we want to do, God always has an angel. God has always has somebody that he can send to wake you up. God has al always has somebody that he can send to get you and our attention to do what it is, what thus said the Lord. Chappelle, just when we think that we are being sneaky, you have to understand that there's always somebody that's watching you. So the people in the midst of the boat, again, they were fearful. And in the midst of being fearful, they inquired, who was it on the boat that caused the ship to go astray? Who was this on that boat to cause the winds and the waves to go haywire? Well, the people began to cast lots back in the Old Testament to find one who was guilty or to be able to render a decision in a particular situation. They went about the casting of the lots using sticks or stones or such materials to get the job done. And so in this case, it was to find the guilty one that was there on the boat, in which we all know, according to the book of Jonah, that it was Jonah, that the lot ended up felt falling on when, once the lots were cast. Jonah asked them because of his own guiltiness, because he was aware of his own sin, he asked them to throw him overboard to keep the people from suffering. Chappelle, I wanna ask you on this morning, what have you done by way of disobedience unto the Lord that will cause a disarray of folks to not get to their blessing, that will cause a disarray of folks to not be, be able to hear from God, to not be able to uh, arrive to their destiny that the Lord has destined them to. Chappelle, no sooner after he did that, the Bible tells us that as soon as Jonah was thrown overboard, guess what? That he was swallowed by a great fish that the Lord, that the Lord already prepared for him. I'm not making this up. It's in the word of the Lord. The Lord had already set up a great fish to swallow him once he was thrown overboard. We all know that he was swallowed by the great fish and there Jonah stayed there for three days and three nights. Chappelle, as the story goes on and on, Jonah had no choice while there in the belly of the fish to pray unto the Lord and cry out unto him, and he ended up complying and carrying out his assignment. My reason for sharing this, Chappelle, with you on today is to point out what went wrong. I want to figure out where Jonah went left, as I tell my Miranda, when she seems to start being disobedient, when she seems to start doing what it is that she wants to do and not doing what it is that mommy has to do, we tell her that, honey, you went left. So we're going to figure out this morning, we're going to walk the word and figure out where did Jonah go left. Well, the first thing I want to bring to you is this. If we look at Jonah 1, chapter 1, verse 3, there it says in the word that Jonah rose up and he fled into Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. So the first thing that he did that got him in trouble was he left God's presence. In my sermon on last week, I mentioned to you the value of being in the presence of the Lord. Now let's look at some of the positive benefits that I shared on last week. Just to touch on a few, we say that there in the presence of the Lord, we can find peace. We said that in the presence of the Lord, there is love. We said that in the presence of the Lord that we receive blessings, we seek understanding, we receive restoration, and we can even receive direction when we're even in the presence of the Lord. And guess what, Chappelle? Even in the tough times, God will go to work on your behalf when you're in his presence. Psalm 16 and 11 says that in the presence of joy, that I mean the presence of the Lord that we experience, full joy. Hebrews 4 and 16 says that let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace. There we find mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Again, Chappelle, when we find ourselves being confident going into the presence of the Lord, the word just told us that there is mercy and grace for all of us. Well, we have to look at the, the negative side of this now. When we're not in the presence of the Lord, 
let's see what it is that we face when we're not in the presence of the Lord. Guess what? Some of us tend to take some detours just as Jonah did. When we're not in the presence of the Lord, we can't hear clearly from God. When we're not in the presence of the Lord, we can't see him clearly either. When we're not in the presence of the Lord, we tend to lack direction. We don't, we don't have a sense of direction. We're, we're just going to and from. We're going here and there and, and, and ended up nowhere. When we're not in the presence of the Lord, we become discombobulated and you end up all over the place, Chappelle. So that's why it's important for us to stay in the presence of the Lord so that we can hear clearly, so that we can stay in the posture of seeking God, so we can be attentive and be ready to do what it is that God has called all of us to do. The second thing, Chappelle, that got Jonah in trouble is this. Not only did he leave the presence of the Lord, Jonah went about carrying out his own will and not God's will. What is a will? The will is simply a plan. When we're talking about the will of God, that is simply the God's plan for your life. Remember, the word says that in Psalms that God, God already foreknew you before you were even in your mother's womb. God already was able to count. He knows the number of heads hair that is on our head. So in other words, God already had the blueprint. blueprint. God had already mapped out who you were and what you were going to do while here on this earth. While in the midst of Jonah carrying out his, his own will, we already understand that what? He was, he was there and caused winds and the waves and others to, others' lives to go into disarray. Again, just because he followed his own will, he left the presence of the Lord. And following his own will, he also became disobedient and not doing what it is that God asked him to do. So when we talk about the will of God, let's talk about the pros and cons. Well, some of the pros was when he was followed the will of God, Jonah was walking in obedience. Jonah was able to preach and teach the gospel. When he was following God's will, he was, he was able to get Nineveh's attention and Nineveh ended up repenting. And in the end, God was glorified. Isn't that what this walk is all about? It's not for our self-glorification, but this is all about God and his glory. As my mom always said, that this walk is not about you. It's not about me. But Chappelle, this is all about God and his glory. Chappelle, let's talk about some of the cons here. Well, some of the cons in not following out God's will is we tend to walk in disobedience. We go out here doing what it is that we want to do. As I said, we cause our own unnecessary storms in our lives. I share on the other day, this past week, I've been walking out an intentional week of happiness because what I understand is that we all have a desire to be happy. We all have a desire to have peace. We all have a desire to have joy and experience the joy of the Lord in our lives. But the truth of the matter is a lot of people just aren't happy. A lot of people just don't have peace on their jobs. A lot of people just don't have peace in their homes. A lot of people just don't have peace in a sound mind on a day-to-day -day basis. And in the midst of doing that, I got a Facebook message from an individual and she inquired and started to share with me about her 2020 experience and then doing so and talking about the things that she experienced the first thing that she mentioned was was it something that I did to cause this she asked was this something that that God wanted me to do she said what can you tell me what's going on here is it, is it God? Is it, is it God trying to tell me something? Is it God trying to get my attention? And I was very prayerful. I didn't answer immediately. I just went to the Lord before responding to her. And Chappelle, what I'm saying here is the Lord took me right back to the book of Jonah. And that's where a lot of us are. We're sitting here confused. We're sitting here living our lives in a disarray, not experiencing the joy of the Lord, not experiencing the love of God, not experiencing the peace of God. Wow, when we talk about the cons, it's because we are walking according to our own will we are walking according to the beat of our own drum and not being obedient and doing what it is that the Lord asks us to do listen it's not always Satan's fault we know Satan comes to steal kill and destroy but sometimes we have to do a self inventory we have to do a self check as you if you will and find out what it is that we're doing are we aligned with God are we studying his word? 
Are we opening up our Bibles? Are we taking time to worship him? Are we taking time to ask him what it is that he has called us to do? Chappelle, we all need to make sure that we are aligning ourselves with God and doing it what it is that God has asked us to do so we won't find ourselves like Jonah stuck in the belly of the fish. Well, Chappelle, we can either go right, do right, or we can go wrong. I tell my children all the time, there's choices and there are consequences. And the same is with God. God gives us all free will. God allows us to do whatever it is that we want to do. And that's the graciousness of God. That's the beauty of God. That's the love of God that he will allow you to walk where you want to walk, talk the way you want to talk, do whatever it is that you want to do. But as I tell my children, the same is true with God. There are choices. You can do what you want to do, but know that there are choices and there are consequences. And based on the choice that you choose to make, your consequence can be good or your consequence can be bad. Chappelle, but despite it all, Jeremiah 29 and 11 says this, and this is what I had to say to my dear friend, that despite her thinking that it was something that she did, or maybe a way that God was punishing her, I had to remind of Jeremiah 29 and 11, which says, the Lord says, for I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. He said that he had plans to prosper you, not to harm you, but to give us all a hope and a future. So when we talk about the character of God, when we talk about who God is, know that and if it involves anything that's negative, that is not God and that is not his will concerning his children's lives. Well, Chappelle, I just don't want to bring attention to what Jonah did wrong. I have to look at what Jonah did right. In chapter 2, it says that Jonah, he prayed. A whole chapter was spent where Jonah prayed. And not only did he pray, he cried out, into the, uh, cried out to the Lord in desperation. And this put him back in alignment with God. Perhaps some of us need to become desperate enough. I said last week, maybe some of us have to become sick and tired of being sick and tired of finding ourselves in the same predicament, of going through the same situations, of dealing with the same relationships. We're dealing with the same issues here at church. We have to become desperate enough to want more, not more from Pastor Kerry, not more from the trustees, not more from Brother Marcus in the choir, but we, want, we need to want more from God so we can do what it is that thus said the Lord. Jonah was obedient. Again, he preached. God forgave him. God let him out the belly of the fish. God forgave him. And Jonah did what thus said the Lord. Jonah made his way to Nineveh. And the word tells us that by him going and walking in obedience, that the people of Nineveh were set free. They were forgiven of their sins by God. Well, Chappelle, in conclusion, I want to look at chapter 4, because it's the conclusion of, uh, of it all for me. Do you know after all of this, after Jonah repenting and walking in obedience to God, Jonah had a nerve to be mad at God. He was angry. He had a little pity party underneath the tree. Why? Why? Well, I'm glad you asked. It's because he already knew what God was going to do. He already knew the final outcome. He already knew that God was awesome. He knew that he was all powerful. And he already knew at the end of the day that God was going to allow the children of Nineveh to repent and get back in right standing with God. So Jonah thought what, Minister Marcy? Jonah thought that it was a waste of time to take his time to go down to Nineveh and do what the Lord asked him. Why? Because he knew that all God had to do was speak a word, and he knew that immediately the children of Nineveh would be set free. While God had his own divine plan, just as he has his own divine plan with all of us, God doesn't do what he wants to do the way that we want to do it. The word says that God's ways are not our ways, and his thoughts are not our thoughts. The word says that God can do exceedingly and abundantly above what we can even ask, or even think, according to the power, what? That worketh in all of us. Well, Chappelle, in closing, Jonah already knew who God was. He was familiar with his characteristics, so much so that he didn't understand why he had to go to Nineveh. 
But God, Chappelle, he understood the full mission because in the whole process, what he was doing, he was not only setting up the children of Nineveh to be free, but he also developed Jonah in this process. And that's what Jonah didn't see. He took this time to develop him. He took this time to teach him. He took this time to show him the, his compassion, the Lord's compassion for his children. So Chappelle, I want to ask you on this morning, what is it that you're missing out on? I want to tell you, the Lord sent me to tell you, don't miss out on your blessing. Don't miss out on what it is that the Lord has for you because of your disobedience, because you want to walk according to your will and your way and not walk according to the plan that God had already predestined for his life. Chappelle, I want to end with this. At the end of the day, God wants you to go. Just as he asked Jonah, he said, go. He said, preach my word and set Nineveh free. Chappelle, I want to leave you with this. I want to talk to all my ushers. God said go. He said when you enter back in the doors of Chappelle, I want you to stand on your post. I want you to greet the people as they come in. I want you to greet them with a smile for you don't know what it is that they're going through. God wants you to go. To all my preachers and my fellow ministers, God said go. Just as he told Nineveh to go, he had a plan for him. He has a plan for you. I know we've been faced with a pandemic. I know we haven't all been able to enter the doors of Chappelle, but God still wants you to go. You can get on the conference line and join the Sunday school. You can get on the conference line and teach Bible study. God wants you to go, ministers. When it comes to my choir members, I know you're not here to be in the choir stands, but guess what? God said go. Go ahead and tune your voices up at home so when you enter the doors of Chappelle, you will be able to make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. To all my musicians, God said go. Play those keys play those drums play that bass play that organ and do what it is that God asks you to do Chappelle you're not you for all the members you're not remiss God said go God wants you to get back in the doors of Chappelle and tell your testimony tell how God has kept you in the midst of 2020 tell how God has kept you in the midst of pandemic tell him how God has kept you when you lost your job tell God tell how God has kept you when your pockets got low Tell the members how God kept you when you didn't have any food on your table. Then when you did anything that you had to do by any means necessary to do what it is to provide for your family. I want to talk to my trustees. God said continue to open up the doors of the church and do what it is that I called you to do. For my deacons and deaconess, God said go. He said I want you to serve the pastor. I want you to get back in a line and bomb it and do what it is that God called you to do. I want you to keep answering that phone. I want you to keep sending those emails. I want you to keep doing what it is that God has called you to do. Chappelle, for all of your members, I want you to get back into the house of the Lord and do what it is that God called you to do. God has a plan for all of us, Chappelle. He said he had plans to prosper us and not to harm us. He said he wants to give us a hope and a future. And why should we go? Because the Lord God Almighty, with his kind self, with his, with his compassionate self, with his loving self, with his gracious self, with his merciful self, with his kind self, with his just self, with his forgiving self, with his all-knowing self, with his powerful self, with his mighty self, his supreme self he sent his very son he loved you so much so and the word tells us that every good and perfect gift comes from the lord that's why he thought enough of us Chappelle, to send his son by the name of jesus that was the greatest gift that anyone could receive the word told you that they hung him high and they stretched him wide and our lord god he hung his head and for us he died he came to save us Chappelle. he came to redeem us Chappelle. he came to teach us Chappelle. he came to heal us Chappelle. he came to restore us Chappelle. he came to sacrifice his life for john 3 16 says for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever Chappelle believeth in him will have life and have it more abundantly, will have it everlastingly. So Chappelle, I don't know who it is that I'm talking to, but I want you to get back in alignment. I want you to get back focused. I want you to get back and stay in the presence of the Lord because the Lord has great plans for all of us. We don't serve a God that wants to punish us. We don't want to serve a God that keeps us defaulted. We serve an awesome God that has a great plan for all of us, Romans 8, 28 tells us that the Lord had a plan for all of us. 
The Lord has a plan for all of us. And all he wants to do, all he wants us to do is be obedient. He wants us to stay in alignment with him. By way of worship and praying and staying in his word, he wants us to, us to stay in tune with him so we all, not just pastors, not just ministers, not just musicians, but he wants all of us, we are all his children. He wants all of us to stay in tune with him. We all have a mission at hand. We all have a purpose. We all have work to do. There is so much work to be done in the kingdom that God needs all of us coming together, uniting together, loving each other, serving each other, doing what it is that thus said the Lord so we can accomplish not our mission, not our mission, Chappelle, but the mission of the Lord. Chappelle, I know this is not a hooping and hollering sermon, but this is something to get our attention. Just like God loved Jonah enough, despite his disobedience, despite him walking away, doing what he wanted to do, God loves you too. Despite your sins, despite the times that you took to go to the club, despite the times that you decided to commit whatever sin that you're, you took the time to commit whatever it is that you are doing, that you know it's not right, that you know it's not keeping you in alignment with God, that is keeping you from hearing the voice of God, that is keeping you from seeing clearly what it is that he wants you to do. Whatever it is you're doing, I pray that you repent. Just like the city of Nineveh, God gives us all another opportunity daily he gives us daily bread, daily. He forgives us daily. Why? Because he already knows that we're going to mess up. But God loves you that much, Chappelle, that he wants us all to get it right. He wants us to do what it is that God has called us to do. And understand, if you didn't catch it by now, God will do whatever it takes by any means necessary to get us back in alignment. Chappelle, at this time, if there's anyone who has backslidden, anybody who's taking the time to walk away from God, again, for whatever reason, it's not my business, but you know, whatever it is that you've said and done that you know wasn't right, go back to whoever that was and ask for forgiveness. Just ask for forgiveness. Ask God to forgive you. And that quick, you'll be forgiven. So whatever it is, Chappelle, I urge you to repent. If you backslidden, all you have to do is give it back to God, turn it back to, over to him, ask him for his help and his guidance, and he will make sure that you can hear and see clearly from him and get back where you need to be. Maybe you're one who wants to get to know our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Minister Mars, you mean to tell me he can do all that and much more? Yes, he can do all that and much more. So if you're one, one of the ones who want to know our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we invite you on this morning to the family of faith. Where we're all Christians, we're all children of God. We're here, the doors of Chappelle are open. If you need someone to talk to, if you need further information, please contact the church office. Know that the Lord's doors are open. He will openly receive you just as you are. Chappelle, if there's anybody that's standing in the need of prayer on this morning, I ask you to go in and prepare an altar at your home. Find a way to go to God in prayer. I'm going to ask Reverend Ash for to, to come at this time to offer altar prayer and the benediction. Make a 
show of your work. But because you said ask, we shall receive. Seek and we shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto us. We come before you because we need you. We really, really need you, Lord. We can't do it by ourselves. So we are asking you. Stop by here just for a little while. Stop by this altar, God. Please, Jesus. Stop and touch each soul. You touch them, Lord. You touch them with your holy hand. In the name of Jesus. Let them know that there is no secret what you can do. What you've done for others, you will do it for them too. We're asking you, Lord. We know you're able to give us whatever we need. We need salvation. Touch our hearts. We need Touch our souls. We need deliverance. Touch our mind. In the name of Jesus. Do it, Lord, for your glory. You did say in your word that our God shall supply all of our needs according to your riches and glory. Somebody is praying for the whole church today, oh God. Somebody's praying for the doors of the church to be open again. Somebody's praying, oh God, for a wayward child. Somebody's praying for a husband or a wife. Somebody is praying for a breakthrough. Somebody is praying for a new attitude. Hallelujah. Whatever they're praying for, God, right now, in the name of Jesus, stop by and lay your hands on them in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, stop by with blessings in your hand, God. Stop by and bless us with the blessings we stand in need of. Let your face shine on us. Keep us in your care, Father. And give us peace. In the name of Jesus, we pray. We're asking, we're seeking, and we're knocking. The people of God said amen. And amen. When I ask those of you who are visiting by streaming, YouTube, if you would grab your nab or cracker, get you some juice as we commune with the Lord today. Yes, the doors of the church are still open. 
those of you who, amen, want to be a part of what's going on here, go to the church of the Lord. But in the same night he was betrayed, the Lord took bread and broke it as he blessed it and he shared it with the disciples. And he said, this is my body that's broken for you. Take it and eat it all. same way he took the cup and said this is a new commandment a new covenant of my blood that I said for you take it and drink it all then he said often as you take this bread and eat it and as often as you drink this cup you do show the Lord's death until he comes let us pray now Father thank you again for this supper and for hallelujah what it was meant for the sacrifice that you made pray oh God that we may forever give ourselves to him who gave himself for us in Jesus name we pray People of God said, Amen. After this, they sung a hymn and praised God. They left.